In this question, we're going to tackle one of our hypothesis tests for a mean. Um, this is our first time. Remember, we need to be reading carefully, just like we did in the confidence interval questions, for whether we're going to use a Z test or a T test. And remember, in real life and on the test, much more likely to have a T test than a Z. So if you're not sure at all, go towards T. So we can see here it said it is known that the great white shark grows to an average of 21 feet. Actually, you guys should go ahead and try this on your own. See if you can get the hypotheses set up and then come back. So if you did that, we have that we, it is known that the average length is 21. So this is a mu, right? It's known, oh God, no. Terrible things are happening. Um, it is the known value. Um, and then the standard deviation that comes next, this must be a sigma then. Nothing in that sentence to tell me that that's from a sample. It's an estimate that we don't know the real value. Um, and again, average and standard deviation. So these are the real deal values. However, one marine biologist feels that they grow much larger off the coast of Bermuda due to the amount and type of food they consume. So here we already see, ooh, a keyword with some direction to it. That's very important for my hypotheses, right? And over the period of the time, he uses a capture and release procedure to measure the sharks. He captures 37 sharks, and their average length is 21.9 feet. All right, so this average is in the same sentence as my sample size, so that's my X bar, that's my evidence. It is not going to show up in my hypotheses. So my hypotheses are, the mean for the sharks off the coast of Bermuda is the same as the mean for all great white sharks, that they are not larger or longer. And my alternative is that they grow much longer. And we can see our evidence supports that alternative. They are slightly longer, 0.9 feet longer. And now we just need to address whether or not it's statistically significant evidence. Um, how unlikely is this under the null hypothesis? So our test statistic, since we have a sigma, if we were to go to our uh, formula sheet, we're doing now a hypothesis test. I have to constantly erase all this crazy yellow stuff I draw. Delete, I don't want delete. Okay, you're killing me smalls. Um, so we're doing a hypothesis test for mean where we know sigma. So this is the formula we're gonna use. So for these questions, it is very important that you write down not only what the value is, but like the, the actual numeric value, but whether it's a Z or a T. So it is important on the test, and if you don't write this, you will lose a point. You need to write Z equals X bar minus mu. How far is the mean that I saw from the mean I expected um, by standard deviations? So we can go ahead, 21.9 is 0 0.09 away from 21, uh, with a standard deviation of 35 over the square root of 37. How, how unusual is that as a z-score? Now this is something that even if you're following along at home, you should definitely try in your calculator. See if you're going to get the same answer as me, so maybe try this first. Um, an easy formula to screw up, calculation to screw up in your calculator. So if you do this, First off, you can't just divide this, right? Because then you're only dividing the 21. So you need to make sure that you have parentheses if you're going to do it all at once, which I, of course, recommend. Did you just get good at this? So we got our numerator. Next mistake is to not put parentheses around your denominator as well. So if you do two division symbols, what's going to happen is it's going to divide, and then it's going to divide again. It's not going to do the, the freeze, change, flip that we know happens when you divide by a fraction. So more parentheses, 3.5 divided by the square root of 37. So it looks like we get out a value of 1.56. So if you didn't get this value, um, just something to be cognizant of or to practice a little bit, that's the Z we expected to see. So we got our test statistic. Next thing would be to find the P value. If we're doing this by hand, we're going to the table. It's a Z, so we're gonna to go to the Z table. And remember, I only like to look in the negative side of the z-table, so we're looking for negative 1.56.0594. Where did you go? Why did you disappear? 
So we have 0 0.0594. We ask ourselves, do I need to multiply by this by 2? I look up, it's a one-tailed test. In fact, if I wanted to draw it, if the mean is really 21, what's the probability we get 21.9 or something longer than that? Um, so no need to multiply by 2. This is my p-value. It's done. We could even keep going. We can make and justify our decision. So at an alpha 0 0.01, our p-value is much larger than that, so we would fail to reject the null. And this poor researcher has to write that there is not enough evidence to conclude. What are we concluding? Uh, that the great whites of the shark grow much longer. Or we could say that the average length of the great whites off the coast of Bermuda, this is a very long one, it's annoying to me, Bermuda is, and you could say greater than 21 feet, you could say longer than a regular great white shark, it doesn't matter, I'll just finish this with greater than 21 point, no, just 21, right, 21.9 was our evidence, 29 feet. Cool, and I could use longer, there are a lot of things, just something that's in the same setting. Or even to uh, conclude that the biologist's claim is correct, right? All of those mean the same thing. So lots of options, lots of ways to write this. Just make sure that whatever you write matches up with this alternative hypothesis. I saw a lot of people whose claims didn't necessarily match up with their alternative in homework six. Um, and then just one last thing, I know this video is getting long, but if you wanted to, you could see do this all in your calculator, right? Uh, this is a z-test. Make sure it's on stats, then you just put in what's the null value, what was the original sigma, uh, which was 3.5, oops, 21, sigma was 3.5, the x-bar or evidence was 21.9, and we had 37 sharks. We wanted to show that they were longer, so it's a good alternative. You get out the same Z, um, p-value is slightly different because of the rounding issues, but otherwise we're perfect. Um, this does bring up a good point about that whole arbitrariness of our cutoff, because this poor guy who spent a year off the coast of Bermuda catching sharks and just got out of p-value, that's not terrible. Um, and all he has to do is write, I didn't have enough evidence to prove what I wanted. So in reality, if you were this researcher, you'd probably be like, uh, I don't want to use this crappy of a significance level, but I've got no other way to deal with this. If I use a significance level of 10%, people know it's not that great, but then at least I can reject the null and say there is evidence at that level. So that's our hypothesis testing.